Hey cooks, today we're going to be using the Carl Smith Sohn pressure cooker and air fryer combo unit to make lasagna. Yeah, we're going to make lasagna by pressure cooking it first and then using their air fryer lid to crisp up the cheese on the top and make it melty and bubbly. So join me. Let's make pressure cooker lasagna. So I know you're wondering, how are you gonna make a lasagna in a pressure cooker? Well, one of the great things about the Carl Smith Son pressure cooker is it does, it's not just a one trick pony. It has a pressure cooker lid, right? That we can use to do the basic cooking of the lasagna. And it results in nice tender noodles and it does a fantastic job. But what's great about this pressure cooker in particular is it comes with an air fryer lid. So when we're done, all we gotta do is pop this baby on here and we can get that crisp uh, melty cheese that we love on lasagna. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank Carl Smith Sam for sending this. I have used it a few times and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, it's, it's a unique kind of pressure cooker in that can be both an air fryer. So you can, um, you know, cook french fries in this thing. You can pressure cook a chicken and crisp it off. You can do all kinds of fun things. And with this air fryer lid, you have your heating element there with a fan to give you that crispiness. So thank you once again for sending this. I'll put links down in the description to this cooker. Um, it's a lot of fun. So let's get out our ingredients and start our lasagna. Okay, I have a pound of bulk sausage here and I'm just using my little meat chopper here to chop it up. This does a great job because it really breaks up the meat and it's way faster and less uh, strain on your arm. Um, you can use any kind of meat you like. You can use ground beef, you can use sausage, you can use uh, ground turkey, ground chicken, whatever you like. So we're just going to chop this. One of the reasons I like using this is because it does it really fine. So you don't want big chunks of meat because we have a small spring form pan that we're using and so you want it really well chopped up. So let me cook this off and we'll be right back. So I'm gonna put about a half a can of pasta sauce in here. We don't want it super overly moist so we're just going to put some in here and watch it. Um, one of the things about making lasagna is if it's too uh, liquidy, the sauce, then when you go to cut it, it just, right? How would we know that, boo? <laughs> I know that by first hand. Um, <laughs> so, this looks kind of good. I think I used about half of this, just your average everyday. Um, pasta sauce. We got that all in there. So I'm going to use about a tablespoon of um, Italian seasoning. This is Penzi's um, Tuscan Sunset. This is my favorite. Um, we're just going to put maybe a tablespoon. Just do that to taste. We're also going to put some granulated garlic. And this granulated garlic is really intense, so I'm not gonna overdo it. And I'm gonna put a little pepper. I'm not putting any salt, just cause it is a little bit salty for me and I don't wanna overdo it. Mm. Smells fantastic. So we're gonna put this all the way down on low. We're gonna just let this simmer, we want a lot, you know, we don't want it really juicy. So we're going to let it simmer a little bit and let a little bit of this excess uh, liquid come off of here and it'll be ready for us. So let's mix the ricotta. Okay, so we need to make our ricotta cheese uh, 
mixture. So we want to take about a cup of ricotta cheese. And ricotta cheese just comes out of the refrigerator. It's kind of uh, very solid. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put this in a little mixing bowl. Mm. We're going to put one egg. And I'm going to go ahead and give that an initial stir up. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get this combined because that ricotta cheese has to kind of um, thin out a little bit. And that's what it'll look like when you get the egg in there. So I'm going to put a little bit of seasoning in here. I'm going to put some granulated garlic. Just do this to your taste. My granulated garlic is very strong, so I kind of put a little less than normal. I'm going to put some pepper. I'm not going to put any salt because I just think the cheeses in here are pretty salty. If you want to salt it, go ahead, right? And we're also going to put maybe a half a cup of mozzarella cheese. You could put Parmesan too, if you like. Mm. So now it's time to assemble the lasagna. Okay, so we have our ricotta, we have our meat mixture, and it's thickened up nicely. This is how you want it. You don't want a lot of extra sauce. We have some oven-ready lasagna. That's what they look like. This is simply balanced organic. It's just from Target. And um, we're going to layer our lasagna. So this is a three inch by six inch spring form pan. You want to get a spring form pan that will fit inside the cooker. This will fit in our Carl Schmitt Sun cooker perfectly. Um, and a spring form pan is just a pan that you can release the edges and lift it off. So our lasagna will be a nice uh, stacked pie, right? So we put this on there and we lock it down. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to put a layer of this just on the bottom, a thin layer. Like I said, you don't want this kind of stuff like overly juicy because it will just be a mess and your lasagna won't stay together. We're going to take our oven ready lasagna and this stuff is like, this is, these are flat. So some of them have ridges like here. I kind of like these flat ones. So we're just going to stack our lasagna. These are kind of hard to break because they're very, <laughs> you will get them all over the place. Um, you just want to fill it in. It doesn't have to be perfect because you won't even be able to tell. So we're just going to stack those in here. You just want to make sure that it's all covered. <laughs> just like that. So we're going to put another layer of the meat here. Spread it out. Mmm, this meat smells really good. <laughs> We're going to put about half of the ricotta cheese mixture. Mm -hmm. Just spread it out gently. Don't be too rough with it and you'll be able to get it all spread out. Mm. Now, I don't know why, but I just put three little scoops of meat in here. I don't know. Maybe it flavors the ricotta cheese. That's just me. I'm weird, right? And we're going to go ahead and go with the noodles again. This is the only tough part because these noodles are really hard to break. Uh, So be careful, because you will have pieces going everywhere. Some meat. Uh, 
And this should be the perfect amount of meat here. Looking good. Ricotta. <laughs> One, two. I don't know why I do that. That's just me. You don't need to do that. <laughs> and noodles. So this is going to be our final layer of noodles. Mm-hmm. See what a mess I made with these noodles? It's all good, though. Right? And for this last layer, meat only. Wow. It's a small little lasagna, six inch, but with a three inch deep. It's a pretty substantial one. Great for a couple people. You get four really nice slices out of this. So you can make it for two and save two pieces, or you can make it for four, serving it up with a side salad and some delicious homemade uh, French bread. So let's get the cooker out. So I have a piece of foil here. We want to secure it nice and tightly on our spring foam pan here. That's going to keep the moisture from the cooker getting inside the lasagna. That will make it way too liquidy and it'll just fall apart when we try to remove it and cut it. So I have this little rack. It just has a little feed on it. We're going to go ahead and put that in there. We don't want the, um, the uh, lasagna sitting right at the bottom, on the bottom of the cooker. We're going to put a cup and a half of water in here. Then we're going to lower our uh, lasagna into the cooker. <laughs> We're going to put the lid on the cooker. You want the cooker set to ceiling. So you have ceiling and venting. You want to make sure it's on ceiling so it will build pressure. So when you put the uh, lid on, the pressure lid on, the Carl Smith's on will automatically recognize that the pressure lid is on. So we're going to set it to pressure, whoops. We're gonna set it to pressure cook. We're gonna change the time to 25 minutes and we're gonna hit on. So the pre it's gonna come up to pressure. It's gonna cook for the 25 minutes and then we're gonna allow it to do a complete natural release till all the pressure is out of it. So we're not gonna be moving it to venting. We're just gonna let it sit until all the pressure is out. So we'll be back. Okay, the cooker is done. We did a full natural release on it. So when you hit venting, there's nothing left to vent. We're gonna go ahead and take the lid off. Woo! So we need to get careful getting this out. Um, I'm gonna use these lifters. This allows you to grab this thing. You're gonna have some liquid here on the top. So we wanna get this foil off, but we don't want this liquid to get in there. So we're just gonna be really careful. It's hot. Do you want a towel? To scoop it up. No, nah, I can do this. Go like that and lift it off. I'm just gonna take a paper towel and sop up a little bit of this condensation down at the bottom. That's just from all the liquid, the steam inside the cooker. We're gonna take a little bit more mozzarella cheese. Ooh. Put this on the top. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yum. You can put some Parmesan if you like. 
I'm going to temporarily take this rack out of here. And I'm going to dump the water from in the cooker. Okay, I dumped the water. I'm going to go ahead and put this back in here. I'm going to put our lasagna back into the cooker. And I'm going to get the air fryer lid. So we have our air fryer lid. And that's what's great about Carl Smith's song uh, combo cooker is we do our pressure cooker now we're doing the air frying and the air frying is going to melt this cheese so there's a little um, connector right here all we got to do is set this on the machine and the machine recognizes that the air fryer lid is on literally this is only going to take maybe I'm going to just put it on five minutes we're just going to watch it because you don't want to overcook it. This is like a broiler. Since I have it up high on that rack, it's similar to putting it under the broiler. So this is going to melt the cheese. And as soon as that's done, we'll be back. So it's only been in there like maybe three minutes. Um, and we'll take the lid off. Look at this. Woo! Now that is a beauty. Let's get this baby out of here, right? Be careful. You don't want to make all your work and kaboom, right? Oh, look at that. <laughs> I would say that looks pretty glorious. Um, this cooker did an awesome job. So I'm going to let this sit maybe 10 minutes. I want it to, you know, um, come back together. I want those sauces to sort of thicken up because we don't want it to be a soupy mess when we open it up. So we're going to let it sit maybe for 10 minutes and we'll be back. So the great unmolding. I'm just gonna take this knife and take it down here and just run it around here just to make it easier to get it out. We are going to unclip our mold here and lift away. You might have to stretch it a little bit. Ooh, it's still a little warm. Ooh, look at that. It's beautiful. Wow. That is amazing. Lasagna, right, Boo? Does that look good? Wow. Okay, so we need to get it off here and onto a platter. Okay, so how I take this off is I just take a spatula and I move it under here, maybe in a couple spots. It's not a huge round thing, so you should be able to get it with just a spatula. And it's pretty firm. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's time to cut a piece. So first on the cooker, the Carl Smith son was great. It cooked it perfectly. And with the air fryer function on it, it is fantastic. I will leave a link down in the description to this cooker. Um, it's really fun. Second on the recipe, you really need to make sure your lasagna is firm. If you use too much sauce, it's just going to all over the place, right? You really need it nice and firm so it stands up and you're able to cut it. So let's do that. So we're just going to cut this into four pieces. This makes four nice servings. Mm. Wow. Still steamy. I let it set up a little bit. Oh, yeah. Nice. Get a piece out of here. 
Look at that. Sweet! Ooh. Now that is lasagna, baby. Look at that, still standing up, nice. The key to that is not having all that sauce in there. So here's our piece. Looks fantastic, right? So Eric, you want to take a taste? Maybe. Of course I can't because I can't have the cheese. So how do you like it, boo? First of all, I just want to thank Amy for uh, making this for me. Ooh, yeah. The firmness is really nice. Keeps it together. Mm. Mm. Bombs up. Mm-hmm. So there's the flavor, multiple cheeses, the meat's all nice and seasoned. Um, the sauce in there, in fact, let's just mess out of here, right? Because that's what I do. Right? Yum, yum. Boo! Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Is it tasty? Mm -hmm. How are the noodles cooked? They're cooked. It's just delicious. It's hard for me to say how it tastes. There's tomato, there's garlic, there's traditional Italian seasonings in there. The cheeses are all in there. It just, it tastes wonderful. The problem is with a normal lasagna, it's in a pan, right? And you gotta cut it all up into squares and make it all look pretty. Here, there is no pan, right? We removed the pan. So it's gotta stand on its own and taste good. This one does both. Yum yum. Mm -hmm. Bye, boo. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, cooks, thanks for joining me. We made this fantastic pressure cooker lasagna. A lot of people ask me, can you make lasagna in a pressure cooker? The answer is yes. In the Carl Schmidt sewn uh, pressure cooker and air fryer, it's a combo cooker, did a fantastic job. I'll leave links down in the description. Again, thank you very much for sending this cooker. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please subscribe below. Leave me a comment and a like and visit my website for this recipe. It'll be up there, printable, searchable, all that fun stuff, amylearnstocook.com. You can also catch me on social media, at Pinterest and Twitter at Amy Learns to Cook, and on Instagram, you can catch me at Cooking with Amy. Oh. Pardon me, garçon. Uh, refill, please. More. <laughs>